Hey guys, Prince of Macedon here. We are going to spectate a battle. Let's let's spectate a uh, this one, this brawl. And it's a uh, eleven thousand seven hundred um, funds, which is I, I believe called large scale. That's the one I normally play on, anyways. So we have Carthage and I believe the the Ptolemies of Egypt here. No artillery are the rules, and Nick Sexy says cool. Hmm. I guess I'll cheer for the. Oh, I thought he was gonna pick. Well, you know, use Carthage, but I'm gonna cheer for the uh, Egyptians because these are the Ptolemies who are Hellenistic. So we'll cheer for these guys, and uh, they'll be taking on the. What is that? Is that the Armenian flag, the Armenian shield emblem, maybe. It's gonna be an interesting dynamic having the Armenian cav being pretty, uh, pretty effective. But when it comes to using Hellenistic factions, a lot of people like using uh, the Ptolemies. I haven't really explored, you know, the abilities of each faction on in this game, so I I can't tell you myself which one's the best. But of course, you know me, I'll, I'm always going to use the Antigonids of Macedon, regardless. I mean, I'm not always going to use them, but I prefer to use them. That's what I meant to say. So we are looking at the Armenian army here. So he loaded up on some of these low-grade, uh, well, these are like axe units here, axe foot infantry. And he's got some some cataphracts, but he's adding more. Uh, what is that? That median cav. Ooh, more cataphracts. Good. So yeah, we're definitely gonna get a, a good showing of the the cav power of Armenia. And let's hope the Ptolemies put on a good show, because I will be cheering for the Ptolemies. We're gonna call the Ptolemy the Ptolemaic player Mostro. I think. Yeah, we'll call him Mostro. And we'll call this guy the Armenian player, we'll call him Nick, because I'm not gonna call him Nick sexy, but that's not really sexy, guys. Oh, what's he what's he changing up now? I guess he feels like he needs more um melee infantry. Oh, he also slipped in a horse archer unit here. Nice. So remember, the only rule is no artillery. And the host is the Egyptian player, so maybe... We might see some elephants, perhaps? Are they... Is that part of the Egyptian arsenal? I believe it is. So Nick should be ready. There's, he has 120 denarii left. Oh, he's adding more cab to it. This could be a very heavy cav army. Holy cow. The archer force might not be that great. I can't tell though. Again, I can't I don't recognize which type of archer this is. Can't tell if it's low grade or not. I wish it would I could click and it'll tell me what it was. And I wish I could see the this army. Oh well. Alright, so the battle is gonna start up here. And who do you think's gonna win this fight? And don't cheat and, you know, scroll to the last few seconds of the video. That's cheating. So, as a spectator, I can do plenty of close-ups. But the real beauty as a spectator is I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a live commentary. And as you guys know, I do like uh, doing live commentaries. It doesn't have to be my own. I've been doing these for years, guys. You know, spectating other battles and commenting. Let me look at this map while we're waiting here. That's cool. But of course, the game won't let it won't let you go down there. So uh, let's go look at the Armenian army here. So we got horse archers. Okay, these are called um, Eastern archers. Let's see if they're all the same. They all appear to be Eastern archers, and then. Armored Horse Archers, Noble Blood Cav, Eastern Cataphracts. Noble Blood Cav, is, they have a pretty uh, infamous reputation online, being very effective, I think. And we got some Axemen. He brought three of these guys for some uh, cleanup. More Noble Blood Cav, Eastern Cataphracts. So now he's deploying his army. Let's go look at the uh, Ptolemaic army here. I don't see any uh, chariots, I mean any uh, elephants, but he does have some archers in the front. 
Nubian Bowman in the front. He has three of them. He only has three archer units, it looks like. Let's look at his calf. He has the, the Tarantine Cav. He's got another Tarantine Cav on the other unit. So, you know, they are basically a uh, Jav Cav. Um, Egyptian Cav. This one, well, that. Egyptian Cav right here. Here is a Ptolemaic Cav back over here. Let's see what they're saying. Good luck, have fun. Then his general is a Royal Peltus unit. I do like Royal Peltus, but I think for the general, especially in this game where the general influence is a lot more special, I like putting my general on horseback so he can influence troops where it's most needed. Here's some more Egyptian Cav, and then you saw the Tarantine Cav already. Uh, Galatian Swordsman. Yeah, if you'll note, the, the Ptolemies did make use of a lot of uh, Celtic mercenaries in their armies. Levy Thurio Spears. More Thurio Spears. Thorex Swords. Thorex Swords. So, there, are, there aren't any um, Phalanx type units in this Egyptian army here, which is probably, probably for the best. Because, as, you know, as most people tell me, you know, the Phalanx type units aren't very good in this game. And, you know, I found that out myself, too. But I, I still use them, though. All right, so let's go look at the overhead deployment here. So the uh, the Ptolemaic line is a bit longer, but the uh, Armenians are stretching out their lines too. So he's going to send some Eastern Cataphracts and Royal Cataphracts to uh, turn back these Tarantines. Yep, they're turning back now. Where are these guys going? These horse archers. Are they going to dish it out with the Tarantine Cav? Now, that would give the horse archers a bit more range. Wait. Are they only Javcats? Oh, I, th I thought these were archers. Never mind. So, I guess that would give them uh, equal range against the uh, Tarantine Cav. Let me see. Uh, how do I do it? There we go. Range is 80. Range is 80 on them, too, so equal range. Alright, might be action happening over here really soon. We've got these uh, armored horse archers shooting at these uh, Tarantine Cav. They're gonna toss some sticks back at the armored horse archers. No losses suffered. Oh, now they suffered one loss. These guys suffered one loss. They got their backs turned on, that's why. Whereas the Tarantine Cav have only suffered one loss as well. And it looks like the armored horse archers have suffered more damage in that exchange. Crazy. But I think being turned around had something to do with it. Maybe? Tactical overhead. So the Ptolemies are pushing in, it looks like. Armenia is going to pull back. These Royal Cataphracts are going to try to chase off these at Tarantine Cav. But they won't pursue that far. Now the Armenian foot archers are coming forward here. So remember, the uh, Ptolemies, in terms of uh, foot-based archers, they don't have as much, you know, foot archers as the Armenians. Ooh, these foot archers are pegging these uh, Tarantine Cav, who are not being hit though. And they're just gonna charge into these archers. So I think the, the skirmish advantage right now is definitely with the Ptolemies. See that? He's doing some pretty good skirmishing. And you would think the Armenians would have superior skirmish abilities. Look at this one unit turn team cap is going to push back these rural cataphracts. That's the general right there too. And the eastern cataphracts. Because they can't really chase after him. They could chase after him, but they're not going to catch him. If this guy's determined. Which he seems to be. Alright, there's a bit more pushing action on the right flank over here. Let's go look at it. There's a huge excursion here. These guys are going to take out those uh, foot archers of Armenia. And they're being followed up with the Egyptian Cav. They are not going to pursue, though. They're not going to charge in there. Take on these Noble Blood Cav. Probably a good idea. Oh, here we go. Here's the charge. This unit of Ptolemaic Cav charged smack into these Axemen. Oh, those Axemen are going down. They've lost, what, 24 men already with that charge. And the Ptolemaic Cav lost nothing. I think this Ptolemy player knows what he's doing. Quickly, 
So it, it's cool seeing just how effective this, the cat has been utilized by the Ptolemies. And here they got a nice charge in on the Eastern Cataphracts with the Egyptian Cav. That charge took out quite a few Eastern Cataphracts. The, general's gonna, the general of Armenia is going to come in. That's Nick's general. So Territory Cav is going to come in. They're not going to charge, but it looks like these Galatian... Sorry, not Galatian. These uh, Levy Thurio Spears are going to come in and help out their uh, Egyptian Cav counterparts. Because in a melee fight, I think the Cataphracts might win this encounter. You can see the Egyptian Cav is not as heavily armored. See, they're starting to uh, waver. But now the uh, Egyptian Thurio Spears are in the mix now. Which means these cataphracts should probably pull out. It's not an effective uh, trade-off here. Alright. It's a bit more pushing action. Oh, this cav unit has ripped right through all of these uh, Armenian units. That might have been reckless, though. Because this unit is now wavering. Oh, uh, no, it actually, actually came through, but they're getting shot to pieces now. So it was a very bold move by the Ptolemies. Let's go look at the action over here on this side. Ooh, Armenia is scoring some blood here. He's taking out a unit of Galatian swords. They are going to be history soon. What else is over here? A unit of Levy Thurio Spears. They are just light infantry, so I don't think they can last too long against these Noble Blood Cav. But again, it's not the kind of fight you want to stick around with if you're Cav. It's not an effective uh, trade-off here. Here's a tactical overhead in case you're wondering. Red is Ptolemy, yellow is Armenia. So it looks like the red side is all over. Armenia here. And right down the center, this unit of Galatian Swordsmen is going to rush right in at these uh, cataphracts here. Galatian Swordsmen, no, no fear. Look at that, they're going right after these guys. Um, so it looks like Armenia hasn't been able to take advantage of the fact that they had more uh, foot archers. These foot archers have been doing more running than shooting, it looks like. So I would say uh, the Ptolemies have effectively shut down the... Armenian Armenian missile system. Oh man, remember when I said the Armenian cab should have probably pulled out? They did not. As I said, it's not cost effective. Especially against a low grade infantry unit like this. You don't want to be trading shots with these low grade units. What we got over here? Armenian Axemen taking on Thorax swords. Ooh, look at the blood. Let's, let's zoom in on that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a beautiful sight. So yeah, just these random uh, Ptolemaic cab units is running back here, taking out um, skirmishers of Armenia. This is Egyptian cab. Let's, let's follow them. Hey, I'm trying to look at you guys. Whack! Find some cataphracts. Alright, let's get out of that. Alright. Definitely getting out of that camera now. So, yeah, I think Armenia is going to go down here. Definitely a great fight, though. I really enjoyed that. I like seeing, um... Armenia's uh, skirmishing techniques. So very, very fun battle. A good, good game to both players, though. But I think the, the Ptolemaic army was a bit more balanced, and it wasn't as uh, I want to say one-dimensional, maybe two-dimensional, army of Armenia. But when I saw all the uh, the cataphracts of Armenia, you know, I thought, you know, they would have a good chance. But I, this Egyptian player was definitely a pretty damn good, at, at least to me anyways. But, you know, I'm not too experienced at this game. Uh, but I really, I really enjoyed that. So a good game to uh, Nick and to uh, Mastro. All right, let's end this spectator video and see what they say. Good game. Oh, he's gone. Ready when you are. That's funny, he says, oh, he's gone. Does he know I'm here? <laughs> oh, he's going to take on somebody else, it looks like. L let's see. I want to see him take on this other guy. I want to see how experienced he is. So we're going to watch him take on another opponent and see what happens. Oh, oh, this is what I like. 
This is a Hellenistic clash. Seleucids versus the Ptolemies. I have got to wait and see this, guys. Oh, he tra- Well, he switched to the Bactrians, which were semi-Hellenistic, I suppose. That's- that's still something, I think. Yeah. Um, we're gonna check- check out this fight, too, I guess. Because, as I said, you know, I did like the way he played. And I could definitely learn from, some things from this guy. Although, I wish he would have used a pike so I can see how, how he uses them. Unless pikes are just complete crap at this game. Oh, come on, not in Armenia again. So, Gold Rage has switched to Armenia, which we just saw. And we already saw this guy dismantle an Armenian player. But well, maybe this guy's a better or a more effective, or, excuse me, more effective Armenian um, commander. We'll see what happens. But Bactria is no joke. These guys have, have some pretty damn good cav, too. And we've already seen, uh, you know, Mastro's uh, cav abilities. So it's interesting how much uh, Axemen this guy's putting in. That's a lot of Axemen. Maybe he's trying to uh, fake this player out into thinking he's going to bring a lot of cav. Because he's Armenian, but no, he's going for a, a huge amount of axes here. I want to see how this plays out. Oh, they're both ready. I'm still going to cheer for Mastro, though, because he's still rocking out a uh, semi-Hellenistic faction. So let's go look at the armies. Let's see how the uh, Bakun army looks. That would, that would be a Mastro's army. I hate uh, putting two, you know, multiple battles in one video. Um, but I think it, I think that takes away from the second battle shown. Most people will, will just watch the first battle, and then they might tune out thinking that the video is over. Because not everyone looks at the the amount of time left in a video. They they might just end it when they see the conclusion. All right, I want to see this. Oh my gosh, I'm such a nerd. I just realized it's Saturday night and I'm here I am spectating a Total War Room 2 battle. The ladies love that. Alright, let's go uh, look at this army of gold. Actually, let's go look at the army of the Bactrian first because we already saw the Armenian army. So Bactrian Hillman, Peltus. Ooh, Peltus. Peltus, more Peltus. So this, this guy definitely changed his look from the uh, first battle here. So, Mercenary, Scythian Horse Archers, Bactrian Noble Horse, Bactrian Noble Horse, Bactrian Noble Horse, Bactrian Noble Horse, Mercia Mercenary, Scythian Horse Archers, Mercenary, Scythian Horse Archers. The General is Bactrian Royal Guard. So again, he put his General in a foot unit. Thorex Swords, Thorex Swords, Eastern Spears, Eastern Spears. So I gotta say, he didn't bring that many, um... What do you call it? Foot archers again. Just like in his previous battle, he he compensated by superior um, cab skirmishing, though. So I guess he doesn't really need that many uh, skirmishers. And these guys aren't even archers; they're they're peltists. So a uh, shorter range than the foot archers. Now let's go look at the uh, back. Sorry, the Armenian army here. Like you guys saw this guy's army during the uh, you know the pre-battle uh, discussion. Hillman. Little cataphracts. Axemen. Axemen. Oh, Cartley Axemen. These guys are a bit more uh, um, elite compared to the uh, regular Axemen. Or is it vice versa? I don't know. You guys probably know. A lot of Eastern Archers. How many? Three. Actually, it's only three Eastern Archers. So Armenia definitely does not have many uh, missile units. So, as, as I said in the previous part, that um, maybe by picking Armenia, he he counted on the other player expecting a lot of missiles. But instead, he did not do that. He went with a lot of uh, foot axes and very minimal cav. So let's see how this battle plays out. I, I think the Ptolemies have a superior army, but we'll see. So this guy brought quite a few uh, mercenary uh, Scythian horse archers. There's one. There's two. Three over here. 
I guess three of uh, mercenary um, horse archers. So he's going to target this uh, right flank of Armenia here. There, now it's right. He probably sees that, wow, there aren't many uh, missile units, are there? So this guy's probably going to make a meal out of it. Let's see what happens. Now, uh, Gold Rage, who is Armenia, is swinging some archers over this way. And also some Cav. Mercenary Cappadocian Cav. What's he gonna do? So all the action's on the side right now. Ooh! Oh man, that shot took out nine Scythian horse archers, that first volley from these uh, hillmen. Wow. That's gonna make a thing twice before getting that close again. Or will it? <laughs> here comes another unit here. Another uh, Scythian horse archer unit. They lost one. Getting that close. Wasn't as bad as that first one though. See that? Where they lost all of these horses in that first volley from the hillmen? Wow. I can see that very cost effective exchange. Scale Thorax Hoplites. They're gonna come forward. They're backed up with some Bactrian Noble Horse and some Peltist and Bactrian Hillman. So both sides are rocking out Hillman of various varying degrees here. There's a lot of pressure on the side here. And what's he doing with his main body here? He's he's moving them to the left. So he's definitely gonna focus his power over on this side. This is a nice adva nice example of an oblique attack. Ooh, that charge went right into the Hillman. Oh my gosh, the Hillman are down to 50. Oh, they're gonna break in that first charge from these uh, Bactrian Noble Horse. Nice! Here come the Hoplites. And they're gonna be countercharged by these Axemen of Gold Rage. Looks like foot archers are going bye-bye here. And these mercenary horse archers are just sitting around taking shots at the Armenian flank here. Oh, Armenia's gonna respond over here though, with his own attack. Is he gonna attack or is he just gonna put some positional pressure on this guy? Probably wants to take release some of the pressure on this side. But yeah, look at that oblique attack, that's beautiful. This right there, it's beautiful. Love it, but these guys were coming forward, now they're going backwards, and now these uh, foot archers, or sorry, these uh, peltists of uh, Bactria are coming up. Well, one of them is, sorry. These peltists are going to take some shots, maybe? Nope, 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 they're not. He had second thoughts over here, over there. So yeah, Armenian units are going bye-bye, uh, they're getting broken. This Armenian flag's gonna shatter. He needs to, I don't know, do something about it. So this is gonna cost him mercenary Cappadocian Cav and Cartley Axemen, in addition to these other units already lost. Mercenary Cappadocian Cav, Axemen, and some archers too. But he's going to put the pressure down the center and also on the left over here. So we'll see. Nice charge from the back to no. Ro 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 Bactrian noble horse into the blood calf of nobility. That unit of helmet got shattered. They, they tried to take on these uh, Bactrian noble horse. I think the Bactrian noble horse got a charge in and just shattered them like they did on this flank over here. Ooh, nice charge back here into unsupported archers. But this cav unit is pretty low though. I think Armenia just admitted defeat. Yeah. Yeah, this monster guy's pretty damn good. I like it. Very sweet stuff. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed those battles of Monstro. I will see you guys later.